Hello everybody and welcome to my review of my Grizzly 10 sliding table saw the G0623X now I actually got this saw around March of this year so I thought I was going to do a six month review turns out this is more like a nine month review but still I've had a few questions about this table saw and I've used it very regularly and I'm going to tell you guys things I like, things I don't like, what I wish they would change if they ever did change it. I was going to break this down into a few sections. I'm going to talk about the saw first, then the actual um, miter fence, and then the cross cut. So starting with the table saw itself, I'll start with the things I dislike and then move to things I like. So the first thing I dislike is kind of the dust collection. I've had times where if this hose falls off of the back support that you can't see, right there. So if the hose falls off of the back support right there, then this whole thing can actually twist and or tilt. And then if the blade is spinning, then it can actually make the guard hit the blade. And it's happened a couple times where this has fallen off. So that's the thing I very much dislike is how kind of flexible this is on the blade itself. Dust collection itself isn't bad when you have the guard on. But if the guard is off, then it really does kind of sling dust everywhere. With this on, it's really not bad. Next, I'll talk about the actual fence itself. Again, things I dislike about the fence first is the original fence that I got from Grizzly actually was not extruded square. And for the first few months I had the saw, I couldn't figure out why my cuts were not coming out square. And this is the old one that I had from them that I had finally taken it off the um, fence itself and I put it on just the top and I took my square and I checked it just that way and I saw that it wasn't square. There was a gap. So I called Grizzly and I will say that the customer service was excellent. Without any questions they sent me another fence. I checked this one first this time. It was square so it was very easy to just Switch them out. And so that's one of the likes I'll talk about in a bit. Another dislike was the sliding table. Um, this was supposed to be aligned from the factory. The table has a number, the saw has a number, and they're supposed to be aligned from the factory. They were not. The gap in the front versus the gap in the back was not the same, as well as the height was not level. So I had to spend a couple hours actually adjusting that. If you can see here, make sure you can see it. Yeah, bring you guys over here. If you can see here, the thing comes with two extension wings, one to the right over here, and then one in the back. Now, they stop back there. We see that rigid stand. For me, I wish that this extension would go all the way back to kind of create a bigger area. I don't really know why they have that space there. Uh, I know eventually my plan is to make that extension table. It's just, I wish they would have that there. It's not a must. It doesn't affect the performance at all. It's just something I wish that they would have done personally. Uh, next thing I dislike is the power button. It's kind of a big one. The power button is down there. That's the power button. Right over here. You have the off and the on. And then there's another emergency on off back here, which is fine. But my biggest problem is the on button. The on button is all the way down here. Now, if I have a sheet of plywood on the sled and the sled is pulled all the way back, I have almost no way of turning on that button. I literally have to come around here, crawl under the table, 
to try to get that button on. A simple solution would either have a secondary on button or to make that power button swivel. If they could take this box and swivel it and make the power button on this side, it just seems like an easier access that way. But that's definitely one of the things I dislike is the power button being right there. All right, so now that I went through the dislikes, here are some of the likes I have for the table saw. I love the motor. It's a five horsepower motor. I have run three inch oak through this thing and it has not bogged down at all. Motor is a beast. I mean, this thing will handle anything you throw at it. As long as it has a good blade, of course. Love this motor. I love that it came with a scoring blade. Now, this blade is for plywood. I have it out right now because I'm not using it on plywood. I was building an oak table. So I took it out, but if you want to cut, if you cut a lot of plywood in your business, or you're going to do any kind of plywood cutting, this thing makes it so that there's virtually zero tear out in plywood. In fact, I actually have, this is a piece of oak plywood. And you can see right there that there is no tear out whatsoever. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's flawless. And this is with no tape. It's just straight cut on the table saw. And that scoring blade kind of makes it possible. So love that scoring blade. And then I also love the fact that the riving knife is a true riving knife in the fact that it does go up and down with the blade. And it's not independent of the blade. Meaning like my last saw I had, I had a really old grizzly. It was a good saw. But the riving knife was stationary. It was either there or it wasn't. You couldn't adjust the height. With this one, if I want to do a through cut, then I take off this cover and the riving knife will go up and down with the blade. So I can do a through cut with the riving knife still there. So that helps a lot with safety. Um, one other thing with the table saw, I love the fence. Now that it's square, um, it's really easy to move back and forth. Not a problem. Getting the tape on there wasn't hard. I love that you can move the fence back and forth. This is especially good when you're doing repeat cuts and you don't want the pieces of segments, especially, and you don't want the segments to get stuck between the blade and the fence. You can move it backwards. If you're doing smaller or lower pieces, the fence can come off and then go this way so you have a lower fence. You can actually use these T-slots for, as cl for clamps. So if you have a clamp or a hold down, you can put the clamp down here and then hold it down this way. So really is a versatile fence. Back here, these two loosen to move it, just tighten, and then does the moving all for you. And then it's your lever, it's up, you can move it. If it's down, it's locked. Very simple. All right, so now we'll talk about the miter that came with the saw. I will say, at first, I hated this thing. I mean, I hated this thing. And it was due to the fact that when you insert it into the slot, into the sliding table, these holes down here for this one, this is the pin, this is in the screw, this one was a tight fit and it wasn't sitting flush with the bottom. If you see here, when you push it up and down, see how it kind of slides up and down like that? At first it didn't do that. It was stuck up here like this. And when it was stuck that way, I would slide it into the slot and I would tighten the miter. And what would happen is it would not sit flush on the table. There was a gap under the slot and the fence. And I couldn't figure out if it left me what was going on until finally one day I just took it and I kind of almost just whacked it on the table out of frustration. And then this went down. I was like, oh my God, what the hell? So ever since then, it's actually been a dream to use. And that was kind of really my only dislike for the miter itself is that, you know, originally it didn't work. And I was, didn't use it for the first few months just out of frustration. And when you're doing small pieces on this big saw, 
you almost need something this small because the cross cut sled itself, it's very big. So let me show you a little few features of the miter that I like about it. Okay, so you slide it into the <clears throat> slot in the sliding table saw. Sorry, slot in the sliding table. And then you can slide up and down. If you have this pin back, then you can pivot it to any angle you want. It does have three stops. Um, these actually were pretty darn close out of the factory. They were a little bit off. I had to do a little bit of adjusting. Um, and then once that's done, you can just push the bar up. It'll hit a stop. And then you can just tighten the knob. And then it won't go anywhere, depending on where you want it to be. Now, this thing does have a lot of the same features as the crosscut sled, where you have these two screws here that when you loosen them, you can slide the fence back and forth. The fence has a smaller sort of T-track on top where you can put a holder in. It does come with this, this sort of stop right here that's very handy that you can fold up if you don't want to use it. You can fold it down once you have one of your repeatable cuts. Very handy. The thing I dislike most about the miter is this thing right here. This is kind of a hold down for pieces of wood. Now, I do love the fact that it slides up and down really easily. It tightens pretty well, so it will not move. It's just this part right here. It just takes forever to do anything with it. If I've got a piece here and I want to switch it out with another piece, instead of just undoing this, I pretty much it's faster for me almost to just undo this, move it out of the way, move the piece, and then bring it back, and then tighten this, and then give this one more squeeze down. Instead of just undoing this and then moving that out of the way. So I wish that this thing would be a little faster. Almost as a quick release kind of this thing is. Or if you guys have seen those C-clamps that have the little red button on the side that lets the um, screw go up and down really fast. Something like that we have a quick release here where it will go up and down really fast. But other than that, it's a great little miter sled. Well, miter. Alrighty, so the cross-cut sled. Really, only have one dislike on this cross-cut sled. But... It's not a dislike because of a defect. It's not a dislike because of anything else. It's just a dislike because I hate aligning things. It's just a pain in the butt. And this thing, the way you get this thing to be 90 is there's a little stop right here. And there's another stop right there. And the fence can go in the back or it can go in the front. So you got to make sure that it's perfectly 90 here and perfectly 90 there. And you do that by doing the five cut method. Those of you who don't know what that is, Nick Ferry has an amazing explanation of the five cut method. If you look at his cross cut sled build, as you can see, it took me several tries, and this is only for one side, not both sides, uh, to get this thing fully aligned. This is the fence, it's a monster, it has a bolt, down here, then a little metal thing down here. And do look at this, all metal, there's no plastic parts on this actual fence itself. So, depending on if you want the fence to be in the back or the front, you put this little metal piece into one of the holes, and then the bolt itself goes into this little slot right here. Then, you have a washer and a knob, I don't know what you want to call this thing, that you put down here. And I will say it's kind of a pain to do this by yourself. So once you get that on there, then you can slide this back and forth. And again, you have angles on this thing, which I have never trusted. The angles on the crosscut. 
I always just use either uh, an angle finder or a predetermined piece of wood that I have at a certain angle. But I do know that these stops are perfectly 90. So I put it back to the stop, tighten, and then I know this is exactly 90. Now this thing does have two stops, which again, I haven't really used two, but I mean, I can't say they haven't been handy. The tape is all but useless on the fence just because it's never the same. You know, this thing slides back and forth. So there's no real point of reference on here as to how far away it is from the blade. The only time I've ever used these, the, the roll here is just if I know I want to bring the stop back to a specific spot. That's really the only time I've ever used this tape. Otherwise, I always measure from the blade. Um, one thing that's really, really handy on this crosscut is this bar right here. This is a support bar. So if you have a huge piece of plywood that you can lean on here and it gets bigger than the crosscut, this bar right here and the sliding table will support it so it won't tilt off. Very handy. And again, if you push this to the front, there's two little knobs down here and here where this thing can slide back and forth. So if you want to push this to the front and the piece is going to be behind you, then it'll support the piece as you push it through instead of holding it and pushing it with the table. Now, one thing again I also love about this cross cut is that the whole unit itself can move. So again, if you want this thing to be in the front and you want the piece of plywood to be behind you and you want to push it through the blade, there's this one little thing right here. You get that loose and it slides independently of the table itself. So the table stays stationary and this thing slides. Again, very handy if you want to do a small piece that you want to get right up to the blade. So again, if you want a small piece and you want to get right up to the blade and you don't want to have to move it back and forth a lot, then you can get it up there, tighten up the cross cut, loosen up the table, and then you get to go back and forth instead of having it back here and having to go all the way up here. So I love that you can move the cross cut along the sliding table. This thing can basically do a full sheet of plywood. So love the cross cut, love the sliding table. And I didn't talk much about the sliding table, so let me go over that quickly. The sliding table itself has a really long reach. I mean, really long. It goes back and forth. It's very smooth. I've had very heavy pieces of wood on the sliding table, and it's never had a problem going forward and back. The bearings on this thing are awesome. Again, it slides like a dream. I mean, just one little push, and it goes all the way. The main reason you buy one of these kind of table saws is because this is your crosscut sled. Western saws, we have to make crosscut sleds that ride in the T-tracks. Um, we have to make jigs for the table saw. This is kind of replaces that. That's what this is for. You put all your pieces here, and you're always standing to the side so that it's safer, in my opinion. But you're not behind the blade with a crosscut sled. You don't have to worry about the blade coming through the back and hitting you. You know, you're always to the side when you're pushing it using the sliding table. And use doing that makes, makes it so much safer. So, to change the blade, all you do, you have to boop, you have to push the table all the way out. Right now it's kind of being blocked by my drum sander. So it can't go all the way. It does slide more than this. But right now, because my drum sander is blocking it, so I don't know if I'm moving the drum sander. So unplug the saw. This slides down. Uh, you put your stop in to the hole back here, and it stops the arbor from turning. Uh, you comes with a key to undo the blade. Blade comes off, change your blade, and you get to go. This right here, this is for the scoring knife. The arbor lock is in this hole right here. So again, arbor lock, unloosen, put the blade back in if you don't want it in there. Because the arbor blade, it can be adjusted by height a little bit here and there, but it doesn't get adjusted with the turning of the blade. So the arbor height is fixed based on where you put it, basically.
Um, this thing can take, the arbor is long enough to take dados. Um, one other dislike I will say, and I mean this is kind of for every table saw, is the insert. This is a very custom insert. So to make, like for example, to make a zero clearance insert, I had to take this off and I had to basically make my own based off of this. And I haven't done that yet. I want to. I want to make, you know, at least three or four inserts for zero clearance for data, stack, things like that. But this is one of the things I haven't done yet and I need to do. I'm kind of dreading to do it, to be honest. I guess noise might be a next question for you guys if you have. Um, by the way, the saw will not start if this is open. So that has to be closed for the saw to start. And if you guys want to hear a little noise level, here's the saw noise. It's actually pretty quiet for a table saw, to be honest. So here we go. And that's it. Like I said, it's actually really quiet for a table saw. Oh, one last thing. The tables, the sliding table does have a lock. This little thing right here locks in there. So if you don't want it to lock, you can slide back and forth. If you do want it to lock, you just twist this, this direction. And then once it goes over the hole, it locks. And it will not move. I love the saw. Um, it does take some adjusting once you've used a Western style table saw your whole life to use something like this. It really does take a lot of adjusting. Jigs is a whole other thing you have to make. I mean, I did finger joints on this thing for the first time a couple weeks ago, and that was a whole other experience to create a jig to do finger joints on this. Because these T slots in the sliding table are not the same size as our Western saws, T tracks. So, again, I had to do all that different. But otherwise, like I said, great saw, great power, quiet, very accurate. I recommend it, honestly. I do. Again, any questions, please leave them down below. I uh, hope you guys like this video. Stay tuned for some more stuff. Thanks for watching.